Good evening and welcome to TR Physics. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to talk about fiber optic cables. This is the last video in Waves. Um, the next playlist will be on particle physics. So I'm going to talk about the last part which is fiber optics and in a previous video I talked about total internal reflection. So total internal reflection, just to remind you, is if you hit a substance or a surface and the angle of incidence you hit it at is bigger than the critical angle and just to remind you how to calculate that that sine of the critical angle is n2 over n1 and n1 must be greater than n2 for this to happen okay so sine theta c you can work out this critical angle with this formula here now, I spoke about diamonds and how they use it to sparkle, but fiber optic cables are a very special case. So this is a fiber optic cable and you have the core and this is where the signal goes and you have something called the cladding. The job of the cladding, of course, it's to protect, so its primary objective is to protect the actual core. So it's to protect the core but also it's to promote total internal reflection. It gives it an, it's another material that can allow for TIR to happen. So it's a material that you can control. You can control its refractive index, so you can control its um, uh, critical angle. If you were, for example, running it from here to New York underwater, you might have, if you just let it for the core to be exposed to the water, it might get damaged, but the, the material, the object is going through is to water, so you don't want that. You want to be able to control it with a man-made material. So it's to promote um, TIR, okay, through choice of the critical angle. So claddings can come in all sorts of different refractive indexes. But the job is that, very specifically, that they have a much <coughs> smaller or a smaller refractive index than the material, the core. Okay. So with a core, the light comes in and is hopefully reflected. And uh, this, of course, can change if you have curls and bumps in the fiber. If the, the fiber itself looks like that, is curled around, as this light bounces around, especially around the bend, you might not be hitting the critical angle. Can you see this angle here has all of a sudden got much smaller than its compatriot here. So this angle is really tiny compared to this one. And this may cause light to leave. So when you bend a cable, you may cause light to leave. So in an exam question, which I'll show you how to do in another video, you get questions like this. So the job, another job of the cladding, of course, is to make sure it stays this rigid long line. So a fiber optic cable has a signal going through and the cladding protects it. Now, the signal looks like this. It's a digital signal, on or off. As it goes through, you lose energy. Some of it may leave. And we call this absorption. Okay. And how this affects the signal is it reduces the amplitude of the signal. Okay, so you have this signal and input and the output is much lower. This means that your signal and over a long distance can deteriorate over time. So there are normally signal boosters along the way. The other thing that can happen is that your signal can start to disperse. What will happen is that your signal is made out of red laser light but as it moves through the material, as it slightly bends, what might happen is that it starts to disperse. And that your full signal
is made up of not only this one, but also this material here. And if you can imagine your signal coming in, dispersing, this is your full signal. They're all going to arrive at different times, which means that you're not going to get your signal in the same on off very clear. You're going to get this sort of graduated. And this is called modal dispersion. And that is all to do with signal arriving at different times. And this is what it does to the signal. Can you see at the front, I've got nice straight, straight lines. I've got these kind of like wobbly bits here. They're kind of slanted. So not only have I lost energy due to absorption, but my signal is not as clear and defined. That my signal sort of isn't on or off. It's this in-between state. And it's all to do <coughs> with modal dispersion. Electronics, etc., are able to distinguish these kind of signals and take away this excess here and read the peaks or the troughs. So for a fiber optic cable, the key things that you need to be aware of are they may have an exam question where they bunch it together or curve it, and that will affect the total internal refraction. Some of it will leave because when you curve it, the angles change, so it's not hitting it at a nice constant angle. You have this core and this cladding that you can protect it, and you have this idea of absorption or modal dispersion. So absorption can be co combated by making sure the cladding or making sure that the items are straight. Modal dispersion can be affected by something called a step index fiber. And what a step index fiber, easiest way to explain it, it's kind of like a tie-dye effect. Inside this core, instead of this core having a whole refractive index 1.42, what it is is that the regions of the core, different parts of it have different refractive indexes. So different, they have slightly different critical angles. And the aim is to make it look something like this. So as I go up, I'm trying to trap things by slightly affecting them as they come round. So you don't get this boom, 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 this nice linear sort of reflection, that you get these sort of gradual ones. But the whole intent is to keep it inside the thing and also to control the speed that the um, object is moving at, the light is moving. So your signal arrives much clearer at the end. That is fibre optic cables. That is the more written part of the uh, part of total internal reflection.